Welcome to this time of worship and welcome to those who will be watching online. We are very glad that you have joined us. For today's service, we look at how Jesus tried to share his mission and purpose with his disciples and how they often got the wrong end of the stick. We'll also look at how Jesus, when he was talking about God's eternal plan, the disciples, and sometimes us too, can only see the here and now. But before we get into all that, let's pray and offer this time of worship to God. Let's pray. Lord, today we record your faithfulness, your goodness and your kindness toward us. We thank you that you walk with us every day and that you are with us in each moment, both the good and the bad ones. As we come to you now in worship and as we lay our lives and all we are before you, may we worship you and adore you with every fibre of our being. May everything within us cry, Holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. For you are before all things, in all things, and know all things. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and nothing is beyond your control or out of your sight. So as we join with all those who worship and know you as Lord, as well as those who might still be seeking you, may we know to listen and hear what you might have to say to us. God of all that is, was and shall be, thank you. Amen. Now some of you might know our first hymn of praise, some not. But let's listen, shall we? To holy is the Lord God Almighty. Let's listen. <laughs> The joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He! And together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord. Stand and lift up 
to our next hymn, which is the wonderful, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
Our reading is from Mark chapter 8, verse 31 to 38, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Then Jesus began to tell them that the Son of Man must suffer many terrible things and be rejected by the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, but three days later he would rise from the dead. As he talked about this openly with his disciples, Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Jesus turned round and looked at his disciples, then reprimanded Peter. Get away from me, Satan, he said. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Then, calling the crowd to join his disciples, he said, If any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my message in these adulterous and sinful days, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in the glory of his Father and with the holy angels. Amen. Have you ever watched a film or a television show with someone and they've suddenly blurted out, oh, oh, I've seen this bit, this is where so-and-so happens? You know, someone who spoils the ending, tells you who done it, or lets you know what's going to happen next. Annoying, isn't it? There's a wonderful bit in the TV series, The IT Crowd, Skip through this bit if you don't want to know what happens. There's a scene where one of the characters, Roy, is desperate to see a particular film before someone tells him what the plot twist is and spoils it for him. Roy tries numerous times to watch it, but keeps getting interrupted. So when his boss offers him the chance to see it at his place, he jumps at it. The only trouble is, once the film starts, his boss keeps trying to guess what the twist is. And the conversation goes something like, oh, I've heard of this flick, there's a twist in it, isn't there? You think it's the future, but it's actually set in the past. It's not Earth, it's all a dream. They're all clones. He's his own brother. Everyone's a ghost. All the while, Roy is desperately trying to get him to stop so he can enjoy the film. Spoilers. You could say that Jesus was the master of the spoiler. He spends a lot of his time trying to explain to the disciples and others what his mission is, what heaven is like, what God is like, how faith works, even how he will eventually die. Trouble is, unlike when someone digs you in the ribs and tells you what's going to happen next, when Jesus tells the disciples what will happen next, they simply don't get it. It just doesn't compute. Jesus tells them of the suffering he will endure, how he will be rejected by the elders, the leading priests and the teachers of religious law, and that he will be killed, only to rise from the dead three days later. And Peter's response, he reprimands Jesus. Now I have great sympathy for Peter. It's obvious he loves Jesus, and the thought of his friends suffering and dying is difficult for Peter to cope with to comprehend. 
So I can completely understand why he's keen to put Jesus straight. And I can imagine Peter, with his arms around Jesus' shoulder, saying something comforting, comforting and supportive, and trying to explain that they would never let Jesus come to harm. However, Jesus needs to let them know. He needs to let them in on the plot. So when G Peter remonstrates with him, Jesus pulls him up for it. Get away from me, Jesus says. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. Peter fails to see the bigger picture. He can't grasp the eternal nature of Jesus, how Jesus, God, has been around forever and will continue to be around forever, even after death. That there's nothing Jesus doesn't know. There's nothing Jesus, Jesus isn't aware of. And there's nothing that isn't under his control. But all that Peter and the rest of the disciples can see is now. We can be like that when it comes to God. We, like the disciples, can forget that God has been around forever. We can call God the Alpha and the Omega, and yet still think that God begins with Genesis and ends at Revelation. And we can read in Revelation 4, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And still think that the God we know, the God we believe in, is for this time, this place that he starts and ends with us, and we fail to see that God is eternal. That's why I use the voice translation for the call to worship, because it uses the term eternal about God. And I think we need to remember that. We need to remember that God is, was, and will be. That God is forever. That God was before us and will be after us. And I think that's why when trouble comes, when we're faced with a difficult situation or decision, we can sometimes fail to go to God because we cannot grasp the enormity, the vast scale of God. We, like Peter, can combine God and Jesus to our own understanding of eternity. We simply don't have the means to comprehend how God can see beyond any horizon and further than we can imagine. You see, I think it's sometimes we can see our faith journey as a solo enterprise, a race that only we are running, one that involves us and no one else. In fact, our journeys overlap intertwine. Where ours begins and ends is part of someone else's journey too. Just as waves move up and down the shore, that movement, that ebb and flow, carries with it the lives of others and new opportunities to tell the story of faith and the story of the eternal God we serve. Our life of faith could be the starting point of the journey of another. What we do or say, how we share, how we serve, could be the way that ignites a faith, seeking faith in others. Bear Grylls once said, Believing doesn't mean we suddenly have to get all religious. I'm not, and Jesus certainly wasn't. It has taken a while in my life to understand that faith is a journey. And as we trust and learn on him, he leads us to the light, to a freer and more centred existence. Free from guilt, free from crippling fear, and free to start living. So, when it comes to taking up 
our cross, following Jesus, maybe even suffering discomfort for our faith, we can get bogged down in how we're feeling now. We can get caught up in the pain, the anger, the rejection, the turmoil of our situation now and miss the fact that God knows. And not only does God know what's happening now, but he also knows what will happen tomorrow, next week, next year. We can forget that just like Jesus, when we enter desert places, angels can tend to us. So as you journey this week, with its ups and downs, its bumps and valleys, remember that God is going with you, that he hems you in behind and before, that he lays his hand upon you, loves you, forgives you for eternity. Amen. Let's listen. And this is one you might not have heard before. never 
a lonely walk. It is a family occasion, if taken in the company of God's children. If we lag behind, there are those who will turn and offer words of encouragement, hold out a hand and offer assistance over stiles and other obstacles, share refreshment, help us from our knees when we stumble. Our walk with God is never a lonely walk. It is a joyful experience as along the path others join us, attracted by the company of God's children, singing the same songs of praise that angels sing, following a path worn down by tears and joy and sacrifice. Our walk with God is never a lonely walk, for he walks with us on a track that leads to a glorious destination. God who journeys with us, May we always be willing to share the path with others. May we always be ready to reach out and pass on our faith, our stories, and allow others to share the journey with us. God who goes with us, just as you were with Jesus as he entered the desert, be with us now. Stay close to us. Sustain us. Love us as we love you. As we continue in prayer, let's say together the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As we consider the eternal nature of God, I'd like us to think about those who have gone before us and those who have now gone to glory. Those who shared their time, their faith, and their prayers with us those who offered to stand with us, stay with us, and show us what it means to be people of faith. So as we reflect on all that we have received and all that we have yet to give, let's pray. God of eternity, we thank you for those who have gone before, the ones we learned from, the ones who shared with us as we walked the first few steps along our path of faith. We offer you our thanks and praise for the lives that have shaped ours, for those who gave of themselves in order for us to get to know you. Eternal God, may we be willing to share our faith with others. May we share what we know of you with our friends and neighbours, so they too might start to seek you and grow in their faith. Eternal God, we praise you. Amen. Our final hymn is a hymn of praise to our God. Immortal, invisible, God only wise. So why not sing along? Let's listen.
Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>